Hello again. We are Chris Lee, Blake Lovell, and Max Barr of Southeastern 14 here to do SEC basketball power rankings. Monday, February the 5th, the regular season and conference play is halfway over. What in the world happened? It is here quickly. We're going to break down all 14 teams, tell you where we ranked them, tell you why we ranked them where we did. Before that, we remind you that this is brought to you by Bet Online. It is playoff time. The usual suspects are heading to Vegas for the championship. Our partner, Bet Online, is your number one source for football odds, stats, trends, and lines with everything from point spreads to hundreds of bets on everything from the coin toss to the color of Gatorade. Bet Online is the number one source for your championship wagering. Head to Bet Online today, get in on the action. Bet Online, the game starts here. The power rankings always start at the bottom. And the same team has been at the bottom for a while now. Mm. But Max Barr, I think you're you're in charge of flipping <clears throat> the banners over here. Let's let's reveal our number banners. 14 team. I, okay. I got the banners. Let me just tell you right now. There is one person in this group that did not switch the order. <laughs> and <laughs> there's a certain fan base that will be upset about that, but <laughs> this is not a one game decision. So I see who's on the screen. I'm not saying it, but <laughs> I did not flip my order this week, just for the record. I know one team beat the other, but I still think the other on neutral court plus the overall body of work is better. I'm trying here. I'm trying. Chris, have you ever heard of denial? I'm trying. I, you know, the gymnastics this man just pulled. To defend <laughs> his client. Am I wrong? What do the computers think? We we try to do this balanced and objectively. What are the computers? But doing? I don't think. Well, that's that's what I was going to bring up. That's You're siding with the computers on this. I'm I'm siding with. I watched basketball and I saw who won the game. That was my take too, Chris. Don't results matter, Blake Lovell? Sure. You know what else? You know else wins, is the status score? Wins. A final. Who has score. eight wins? Who has six wins? <laughs> Uh-oh. Results matter, don't they, Chris? Like, that's what I just said. Yeah, so, that's what I just right. said. Results matter. Are we only counting SEC? Or are we counting the whole body of work here? That's all we're doing today, buddy. Because one oh, team was okay. over, the other team was over. They had a caged death match, and Jerry Stackhouse and Vanderbilt came out ahead. That's right. why having, Vanderbilt is number thirteen. Boom. We're having fun with this, but look, I'm trying, Missouri fans. I- I'm doing my best here to represent my client. I know it's been a struggle. Congratulations to Vanderbilt on the first SEC win. But I don't have a lot more to add. Um, the computers still like Missouri more, so I want to lean in on the computers. But Vanderbilt beat them head to head. So which I predicted, by the way. Well, it, it we're doing power rankings, but I like we do like to look at the upcoming schedule to kind of forecast how tough or how maybe how nice of a run they could go on something like that while missouri's got two straight two straight home games in which they'll be about four to five point underdogs in each which to win one of them would give you about even odds to win one of them so they have a chance you look at vanderbilt's upcoming schedule kentucky south carolina a and m tennessee so i'll give i'll give vanderbilt the the nod today because i don't know how long it's gonna last (laughs) And then there's the must bus. Blake, have we checked on the must bus recently? Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. <laughs> I mean, it's, yeah, there's, yeah, there's no status change. I mean, it's <laughs> the same as it's been. So I, I did tell Max in the reaction video, boy, you want to talk about mental gymnastics? Chris was trying to do all the mental gymnastics in a reaction video last week to tell me that Arkansas is about to turn this thing around. And I said, Chris, you got to slow down, pump the brakes for a second on the must bus. Okay. We got something coming out on the road, pump the brakes for a second. No, I mean, you could, you try it. Like you said, you, you tried to feel like maybe they would turn a corner after the Missouri game. But I just think, like I said, it, it went back to Missouri struggles. Arkansas played well, but, banking on any consistency with this team right now all season has just not been something we've been able to do and they turn around and lose by 21 at LSU. So um I don't have a lot more to add other than I mean Arkansas fans have watched it. We're not gonna say anything that they haven't already seen or heard at this point. So 
Yeah, I don't have I don't have much to add. I, the only reason I have them above the bottom two is because they won the head to head at Missouri. Um, but then just like you said, right back to letting up ninety five at LSU. So they're above the bottom two, but not by much, in my opinion. Speaking of LSU, my goodness. Woo. The Tigers, what was that we saw Saturday, Max Barr? We saw some flamethrowers. Will Baker going four or five from three. Are you kidding me? This is this is a scary 11 in the, in the power yes. rankings. This is a scary 11. You play at LSU and they hit their first few shots, you're in for a long night. This team can play defense, and they got some guys that have played a lot of SEC basketball. So we've, we've got them here at 11, but, man – they're they've got they pack a little bit of a punch. Well, they better play defense and offense this week because they got Alabama and Tennessee. So yeah. um <laughs> they better do something. These next four games, actually, no, I said the next six games, I think, in one of the previous videos. This will make or break LSU season. They may yeah. make the tournament if they win quite a few of these games here coming up at Tennessee, home against Alabama, at Florida, at South Carolina, home against Kentucky, home against Mississippi State. Are those then, all quad one? They got to be. Yeah. But then what happens? <laughs> then you get into that territory where it's like, uh oh, we can't lose any of these last ones because we play in Georgia at home, which we'll see where that is by the time they get there. At Vanderbilt, at Arkansas, home against Missouri. So you can, in hindsight, say, hey, they got a great finish to the schedule. But at the same time, it's really not for a team that's trying to make the tournament. You don't want to play all these bad teams at the bottom at the end because you may still need some wins somewhere. So my guess is if LSU can make the most of this next group here, what if they go three and three or something? Um, we won't get into all the hypotheticals now, but when those last three, two may have some intrigue going into the SEC tournament for the Tigers. Keep an eye on LSU. We'd really have some intrigue with number 10, Georgia. If these guys could just close a game, my goodness. Well, you still know like your team. Well, have at it. I mean, they're just not a good offensive team. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Like, that's, I think I keep going back to it, but like, I'm not as surprised maybe as you guys are with Georgia not being able to finish these games. Like, what do they do great offensively? Like, great. Like, don't, don't all the other teams kind of we talk about in that upper tier, like, they, they have that area offensively. Yeah. But they are just, far and away maybe better than other teams in terms of how they combat it. I just don't see anything with Georgia offensively where I'm just – I'm so wowed to the point where, you know, they're going to be able to put up – enough. and I know people are going to say, well, they scored 96 against Kentucky, 98 against Florida. Those two teams aren't very good defensively. But, you know, I just we, – we see teams go on runs against Georgia, and I think that's what stood yeah. out for me is Georgia just stalls. And – I just – I don't know. Like, I, they've got good offensive players. Don't get me wrong. we talked about all of them. But I think as a unit, they're shooting 35% from three, which is pretty good for the SEC. Um, you know, they're shooting well from the free throw line. But I just – I don't see that extra something offensively that I think they need to be able to hang on in some of these games because it puts too much pressure on them defensively, which they're a good defensive team. They're not an elite defensive team. So – I'm just looking for that one area that Georgia can kind of carve out, like South Carolina, other teams like that, that have made it like we are going to beat you in this area. And I just – I don't know what that is for Georgia right now. I feel like Georgia is very streaky offensively. Yeah, that's that's a good word. I think I've got a way to sum it all up because I'm looking at Ken Palm. They're seventh in the league in adjusted efficiency in league games. You look back – and. I think Blake has been a little hard on them here because you go back two games ago, scored 98 against Florida. I get that Florida is not a great defensive team. Scored 96 against Kentucky, same thing. Scored 79 against Tennessee. Now, that's an accomplishment back January 13th. But what I think it is, you look at just about every team in front of Georgia in our rankings, and I think you can either absolutely name a go-to guy that every team has or maybe multiple go-to guys. They're like, sometimes R.J. Melendez pops up and gives you 35. That's probably an outlier. Sometimes it's – they've got guys who can score here and there, but I think the teams above them, you might be able to say that every one of them has a more identifiable, dependable basket getter than what Georgia's got, and maybe that's it. Maybe. 
Yeah, I, I, again, I don't think they're a bad offensive team. I just think it's, no. Max said it, like I think streaky is the right word, where they have some hot streaks and they just go cold. And mm-hmm. then it just puts a lot of pressure defensively on them. And, you know, like I said, they're not bad defensively, but they have given up 85, 105, 102, 85, right? And and let's add this to the back, too. Like Mississippi State, I'd say Georgia's probably maybe played the second toughest schedule of anybody in the SEC to this point, when you really look at it overall. So also something to consider is that they've not played the easiest schedule after those first two games, which they played Missouri and Arkansas. So that has something to do with it. They're not that far off. Like, don't get me like, it's just, but maybe it is, maybe it's the difference in not being as streaky and maybe having that guy, that one guy who just completely can take over, you know, to score 20 a game. They're probably not quite there yet. So. Yeah. I mean, it, it looks like an NIT team to me. You know, NIT teams, a lot of times the difference is they, they just don't finish games and get the big wins. And I look at – they got a lot of nice players, maybe good players, but not a not a superstar in there. And I think I think Georgia's probably going to wind up in the NIT, and I think the, the team just is what it is. Mike White's done a great job, got them ahead of schedule, but I think the ceiling is, is a little limited. Continue to like them, but, but maybe not love them. Okay, my goodness, Mississippi State. Hmm. Last two weeks have been brutal. I did did get that win over Auburn, but road trips to Ole Miss, which hadn't lost till Auburn beat it, and then Alabama, which is just smashing all comers these days. Did we overreact react here, Blake, to Mississippi State by dropping the Bulldogs to nine? Because they've got some good wins, and it's a good experienced veteran team. I feel like we know what it is, but maybe that's just a testament to the rest of the league. Well, if we're going to go back to the earlier discussion of results matter, they're three and six in the SEC. At some point, you got to win games, and it can't just be you have a tough schedule, right? So did we overreact? I don't think so. And they only have three wins out of nine in league play. And if anything, some people would say maybe they're like, wow, they're still ninth, right? And not look if you want to look at it the optimistic way, it's like they only have three and six, and they're ninth. So I don't think we overreacted. I mean, they just got blown out by 32 at Alabama. They don't play well on the road. They won their home games, which is fine, but that's, I mean, at this rate, that's not enough. <laughs> like you gotta, you gotta go play well on the road at some point. And I haven't really seen them do that consistently yet. I mean, what game have they played well, except for Ole Miss on the road? I didn't think they played that well at Florida, didn't play well at Kentucky, didn't play that well at South Carolina. Um, all tough games, all again, one of the tougher schedules, probably the toughest schedule so far. But I think we're at the point now where we do our power rankings, we can't just bank on what a team could be or should be it's what are they and they're three and six but as i've said before too they're three and six and in my guess is that they're gonna be seven and six potentially eight and six because of the upcoming schedule so we'll we'll course correct with mississippi state as long as they turn this around but for now i have no problem having them at ninth because they're three and six in the league I think one of the main reasons I'm okay with having them at ninth, because I I am, I do really like this team. I do. I like the bully ball aspect. You know, I love that stuff. But while they do have two of the better wins in the league, they have a win over Tennessee and Auburn. You're right. They have not been able to win on the road. But the thing that's really concerning me is now no DJ Jeffries. We haven't, oh. had, we haven't had a status update on him. Um, I just checked 30 seconds ago. Still no update. So, I mean, if DJ Jeffries is, is going to miss any time, that's massive. That is just massive, uh, especially for the perimeter defense because Cam Matthews guards the four, Jeffries guards the three. So it's it's very big for the perimeter defense. So if Jeffries is out, then I really like this down here at nine spot. But if Jeffries can come back and they can string up a few wins, maybe we'll see them do something similar to last year. All right, number eight, the Ole Miss Rebels. Speaking of teams in the state of Mississippi that have had trouble winning away from home, of course, Ole Miss hadn't played a ton of road games. I guess it's played four or five. Well, they won twice. But what they didn't do is they didn't protect their home court, which they had done all year until Auburn came to Oxford and walked out with the win, disappointing Morgan Freeman and the home crowd. Still a good team. I think still would be in the tournament today and a lot, a lot of work to be done ahead for the Rebels potentially. Max, yeah. you get the yeah. first word here. 
Yeah. I mean, this is dis- disappointing after they held the lead at home, mm-hmm. but I've been saying it the past few weeks, uh, really more so on the road, but I think we also just got to kind of apply it to the the upper tier of the SEC. This Ole Miss team is is in year one, you know, and then they're probably going to struggle against these these top tier teams. Um, I think Bruce Pearl said it in his presser. Said, you know, what I what took me three years at Auburn, Chris Beard's done it in six months. So like, while yes, they are way ahead of schedule, still got to remember that he just put he put this lineup together a few months ago and didn't even know that CSA and Brandon Murray were going to be playing. So against these top teams, your Auburn's, Tennessee. Um, you got to go to Kentucky. They're going to play against Alabama at home. I think Ole Miss is going to struggle in these games. They might shoot the lights out and make it a real close game like they did for most of the Auburn game. But I think that's just kind of what to expect now. I think if they're going to get into March Madness, it's going to be right around that 8-9 type of seed, um, middle of the pack. And I think that's success in year one for Ole Miss. But I think this is what we're going to expect now. They're probably going to struggle against these bigger, deeper teams that have – you know, been there and done that already. G.G. Murray, most underrated player in the SEC through the midseason. Per my choice in our awards. If you didn't watch our awards. Yeah, go spoiler. back and watch our awards. Spoiler, he's my most underrated player in the league um, to this point. But, yeah, I'm just going to – everything Max said is correct. That's all, that's all i got to say. Max was right about everything. Thank you. Next. My most underrated player was also from Ole Miss. It was not the one that Blake had. So a little, little teaser for Ole Miss fans who want to go back and watch that. All right, number seven, Texas A&M, my preseason choice to win it all. I have gone very sour on the Aggies because of the inability to shoot and not having a Tyrese Radford-type performance like we are used to night in and night out uh, for Coach Buzz Williams. But that, that changed Saturday. He's the guy that kind of carried them to a big win over Florida. Blake, are we we starting to see some – was that a sign the Aggies can break out? I mean, I know we can. Oh, boy. Okay. That's, I'll just let you know. <laughs> Anytime you ask if it's a sign, Chris, we see what happens with these teams afterwards. Don't do it. Don't put the jinx on. We're going to have to come up with a phrase for this one now, too. So, what are we, we going to call this one? The we, Blake, we tried. We we love our fourteen children here. We try to give them all hope. Well, I'm and, not. I'm not the man who just you. is Debbie down I'm every not. time I try to bring. I'm up just a pointing out that lining. when you try to turn the corner for a team and they come out and lose by twenty on the road in the next game, <laughs> don't do that to Texas A&M, who's about to go play at Missouri, <laughs> who's winless. Don't do it to them. That's all I'm saying. Or maybe did I pay you to do that so that you would do that so Missouri mm. can get the win? Oh boy, one will never know. But the Aggies are 350th in the country in effective field goal percentage, 357th in three-point percentage, 299th in two-point percentage, 276th in free throw percentage. All those got to get better if they're going to win games in March. And that's really all I have to say. Like, it was a great win against Florida. They've now won three of four. They've beaten Florida. They've beaten Kentucky. And they're going to get a great home opportunity coming up against Tennessee this weekend. So the Aggies are trending in the right direction. But if they're going to be, you know, preseason SEC team of the year, team of the world, the universe type level, they got to shoot the ball better. And until that happens, I'm not sure what to think about them. Their defense is getting better. I will say that. Something a little underrated. We all want to talk about their offense. Their defense is getting better. They're playing better defense, which is what we expect from a buzz team. And that may be something that's going to give them a shot. They're going to play some ugly games, but hey, they're winning more than not these days. And so um, I, I, I think I may have said this to Max yesterday. Texas A&M is the team that I don't care what game you're playing in. Like they just have become the team, in my opinion, they're not going to blow anybody out, but they're not going to get blown out either. And so if you look at it that way, you feel like every game they play is going to be close. So A&M fans, bite your fingernails, whatever you got to do to stick with this team. But, I just think they're going to be pretty frustrated just based on that fact. So, if you look at their remaining schedule on Ken Palm, Ken Palm will will predict the outcome of each game. Now, it's not exact, but it just gives you an idea of kind of strength of schedule remaining. Texas A and M's predicted. I'm just going to go you go through the the outcomes real quick. Win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss, win loss. 
Yeah. That I, that pretty much sums up my year. That's what that's what pretty much sums it up for me. And Blake said it perfectly. They're they're not they're probably not going to get blown out, but they're if they're not making shots, they're not going to blow you out either. It's going to be those 67, 66, 63, 57 type of games and until I see something change, that's just kind of what I'm going to expect. Number six, the Florida Gators. I have a small beef with this one because Florida just beat the team ahead of it on its floor. On the other hand, uh, if you want to do the whole season comparison, there's grounds to keep the Gators here. But all right, Blake, just just have at it. You're no, we'll let you have the floor because you are no. I, I haven't good. seen someone this excited about Florida basketball since the Billy Donovan day. Like since they just you know won back to back national championships. So. We're just having fun here. Like, you are the high man of Florida. You became the high man of Florida after you watch them play Kentucky. I mean, again, Chris is up. Yeah, you know, We're getting texts at midnight. Like, Chris just sent us texts. He sent us <laughs> pictures of gators in the wild. Like, Chris is sending us all these National Geographic photos where he just got alligators everywhere. So, he's been all in on the gators. So, I'm letting you have the floor on this one. Like, hey, you're, buddy, you're, you're, you're Debbie Downer. I mean, we just we just gather around the festivals poll every time we bring you. I'm, I'm just out here looking for somebody to love, and the Gators are pretty lovable right now. That offense man back Max yeah. has got me on board with Zion Pullen. They got yes. Lawrence Clayton. They got Tyree Samuel. They got a lot of parts. They got Will Richard. They yeah. got Micah Hen Logan. They got a yeah, good coach. Do. What? Why? Why do you hate Florida? I, I'm just yeah. gonna just gonna put it out there. Why do you? Great have time. It's a great time to jump on board with the Gators after their 66 point performance and a loss at Texas A&M. I agree. I agree. That'd be downer. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I love this Florida team. I think they're great. Oh uh, yeah, you I, talk I, like about them like you. We have them. Max and I in our preseason rankings. We said like this was that team. If you yeah. want to find like a sleeper team that could win the SEC, we look at this guard group. We were salivating over this guard group and. I mean, look how it's played out, right? Like you said, Walter Clayton, Zion Pullen, um, Will Richard, like Riley Cooper. Like it's it's wild to see how this thing's played out for the Gators. And now that they're winning big games, they won at Kentucky, they beat Mississippi State at home. They got some confidence. We said they were in a tough spot at Texas AM. That's why Max and I picked against them. Yep. It wasn't that we did not like Gators. It was because we thought the Aggies were in a spot where they kind of had to win that one. So, of course, I'm not jumping off the Florida bandwagon just yet after a one-point loss on the road. They get Auburn at home on Saturday. They get the week off, relax, go back into the water, come back out, ready to chomp on the Tigers of Auburn on Saturday. I, that was good. That was good. And I'm glad you said that because what I was going to say was, man, it, it would sure get interesting in these power rankings if Auburn was to – do something on Wednesday. I don't know what you know who they play mm. or if they even have a game or anything. But mm. if they were to do something on Wednesday, I'm gonna have to go on the road to a Florida team that just had the week off. Mm. Wonder what that do we have the we'll look at this. We won't do it today, but we need to see what that stat is for the teams that have had the midweek off and we played might be Saturday. Because A and M again had that them. against Florida. I wonder if that's we'll look that up and see so far. But but yeah, I like I'm not off Florida at all. Me either. Who do we got? Who do we got? Number five, Kentucky. I don't even know what to do here. Mm, that's interesting. Kentucky out of the top four for the out first time, the I think, four? this game. I mean, somebody else has jumped them. Hmm. But before we get there, we got to talk about Kentucky. Yes. Um. Hmm. Well, I mean, this is a product of losing two in a row, losing three of four. And I mean, you know, I try to tell you guys, these defensive efficiency numbers are just, they're not getting any better. And so, you know, I've been riding that for weeks now. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's, I don't know what we get. It's like, what do you do with Kentucky? They're five and four in the SEC. Like we can say potential and all this other stuff and all that. But yeah, I mean, they got, Beat at South Carolina, play the worst game of the season there. Lose an overtime game at home against Florida where they had a chance to close it out in regulation. Couldn't. And, you know, I mean, I don't, I'm sure you guys saw the stat. I don't remember what it was off the top of my head, but I'm willing to bet giving up 94 and 103 in back to back home games has not happened in a long time at Rupp Arena. So, um, yeah, 
No DJ Wagner. Yeah, that's um big, big stretch coming up for Kentucky to right the ship because they go to Vanderbilt on Tuesday, play the Zags on Saturday, play Ole Miss the following Tuesday, and then go to Auburn after that. So very important stretch for the Cats. Also, yesterday it was reported that Trey Mitchell's been dealing with a back injury. He hasn't mm. been he hasn't been a hundred percent. So could see Kentucky, you know, they, they got out of it, but we could see him falling back into the injury bug a little bit here, which would come out of come at a tough time. But I mean, yeah, Blake, it's you gotta be results based and what you see is what you get. They haven't been able to stop teams and they've lost three of their last four and the one game that they did win did not look good at all. Um, yeah. So, I mean, hey, you, you do that the past two weeks, you're not going to be in the top four. And is there loaded potential and talent and scoring and draft picks? Yes, 100%. And they could completely turn it around quick. But as of right now, they're not playing well. So they're here at five. That, that's an interesting point. Mitchell's scoring has gone the last five games. Way down. 23 to 13 to 10 to 5 to 0. Yeah, I think Trey Mitchell has been very back. consistent. Yeah, that yeah. that might that might explain back back injuries are they can they can kind of wreck you. Other than that, Kentucky, when are you going to play defense? That's what we're all wanting to know. Moving along, Woo. our father in Columbia, how will be your point guard? <laughs> you, you, you grind it out offense. Let your will be done. Forgive us for we knew not what we did when we picked you as low as we did. <laughs> All hail the Gamecocks. Blake. Oh my God. Was that off does, the top of your head? How does anyone follow that? <laughs> wow. Look what I wore today. I'm I'm honoring my our father. Listen, if South Carolina keeps this going, I got something for you guys. I'm not gonna I can pull it out just yet, but um I got some apparel for you. Uh but you know, I think there are some. And I know South Carolina fans will, will maybe argue this, but there's a part of me that I think you could even justify South Carolina being higher than four. Um, and, you know, again, we're not just going off of the SEC standings, which right now they would be Alabama's one, obviously. Um, South Carolina and Auburn both have seven and two record. They haven't played each other. So it would go to some wacky whatever. They both lost to Alabama. So then I think it would go down to Tennessee, which South Carolina beat. So I guess South Carolina technically would be second if you did the seeding today. Um, but what else do we say about the Gamecocks? South Carolina fans, you're here now. Again, even if you came in because of people picking against you, one of us has learned the lesson. One of us has adopted a strategy from the lesson, and I don't know what the other person's doing. He's trying to convince you that just because he's wearing your colors in the sweatshirt that all of a sudden he's changed his tune. We will find out with the picks this week because – South Carolina hosts Ole Miss and Vanderbilt. Two very winnable games, 7-2 and two in the SEC. Remember, if we're looking ahead, I keep saying it, it's time to start factoring in the Gamecocks into the SEC title race. It, there, there's no excuse not to at this point. Based on their schedule the rest of the way, and you're looking up, Alabama's got to go to Auburn, and they got to go to LSU. Whew, this thing's about to get interesting, folks. But South Carolina's got to take care of their business. They got to keep playing the way they've been playing. If they do that, Gamecocks gonna have a chance to win the SEC title. If you cut, if you catched, if you caught our reaction video, Blake said it's time, people. It is time to wake up. And couldn't have said it any better myself. This team has an identity. They have a specific style of play that they do not deter away from they put their pace on you as in the opposite they slow you down and they're not going to let you get out and run and they're going to defend the heck out of you and then they're going to make big shots when they got to make them because everyone on their team can shoot Colin Murray Boyles is only getting better this team is as real as it gets they've got a nice schedule set up here with a chance to grab a few more big wins it's time Open up your eyes and accept that this team is legit. And I just want to say my strategy moving forward with this team, I believe in you. I'm telling you, I'm bought in. I'm in. Two feet in, head first, in the deep end, I'm in. 
but I'm going to keep feeding Lamont Paris's need for doubters. Doing you guys a favor. Start believing in the Gamecocks, though. They're for real. Number three, Auburn. Finally got a quad one win at a place that's not easy to get one. Blake, I'll start with you. You take on Auburn at the moment. Well, last week I cut a five-minute promo on Auburn and how it's time to not be concerned. And what did they do in the (laughs) follow-up? They gave you plenty of reasons to not be concerned. They came out and took it to Vanderbilt by 27. They went and won by double digits at Ole Miss, a place no one has won at this season. It's time. It's time with Auburn, too, folks. Like, why, why are we still trying to find ways to pick apart a team that is 18 and four with 18 double digit wins this season? What are we doing here? Like, come on. They lost at Alabama. They lost at Mississippi State. So what? Two games, 10 points combined. It's just, come on. What, what are we doing here, Max? What are we doing? Well, what we were doing was being concerned about the road shooting woes, and then they came out, went to Oxford, and shoot 44% and torched the Nets all night. So, Just like we all thought they would. Yep, just like we all predicted. So if you were concerned about that, like I was, feel like an idiot right now. (laughs) So I think Auburn played two of the hardest road games you can play in the SEC back-to-back in the same week. And came up very short in both of them. And like I love to do, I overreacted. So now I am rescinding my overreaction. And I'm back on Blake's timing. This team is very good. Number two. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. You don't have anything to say. You haven't said anything about any of these teams in Florida. You've checked out since the Gators. You said, you know what? I'm all in on the Gators. I got nothing else to say. It's true. (laughs) I'm I'm daydreaming about about Gators. I uh, really really want to see the midweek Auburn Alabama. Auburn is darn near invincible at home, but boy, we got a team rolling in there on a the heater that beat Auburn the first time too. Uh, look, we we talked last night about our midseason SEC Player of the Year. I, I debated between three guys, one of which was Janai Broom, who. Per minute, the best player on the court in the league. I mean, he put up – what did he do Saturday? He was – was he scoreless in the first half and then came out with 15 in the second half, something like that? I mean, he just yep. – this man just switches it on at the drop of a hat. And he had seven assists. Yeah. If Auburn can just shoot better. I I, I really got no qualms with Auburn other than the three-point shooting. But but that's not a, that's not a little thing. That's, that's a thing that if it – if it goes wrong on the wrong night, um, it can wreck a season. So I'm I'm very interested to see Auburn hits the three here on out, which again may may go back to the shot selection and who gets more of a green light than than others. But anyway, you've heard that before if you followed our channel. Number two, Alabama. My goodness, you did not want to run in the Crimson Tide last week. Let me just recap Alabama's. Last few games, working backwards. 99-67 at home over Mississippi State. 85-76 at Georgia in a game that Alabama trailed well into the second half. A 109-88 pounding of LSU. And then, of course, that win over Auburn two weeks ago, 79-75. to That all coming off Alabama's really only disastrous performance of the season when Crimson Tide went to to Food City and, and the food spoiled. But, uh, yeah. Our man Blake has been high man on Alabama, and I will give him the floor to gloat. Not that he would ever do that. I'm not going to. I'm just going to tell you to, to go to Southeastern 14's YouTube channel. Go find any videos we've talked about with Alabama since they were 6-5. and five, And that's all I got. Do you want anything else, or is that all nope. you got? That's okay. It. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, Blake has uh, Blake has not been on this team at all. He has not liked them. <laughs> I have. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just joking. Um, I, I, I assume Alabama fans are going to be saying, "Why are they not number one? Look at what they have done in the past two weeks." I was 
I was flipping and flopping back and forth. The only the only thing was if if Alabama went to Knoxville and you know didn't get walloped, they would be number one for me right now. But but since that was a drilling, that you didn't lead at any point in the whole game. Just I could not I couldn't put them over Tennessee. But if we're going with who has this is a power ranking, but if we're going with who has more momentum right now and who's rolling. I would say Alabama, but I couldn't do it with that head-to-head. I couldn't do it. But this is as close as I, as close as I've had a decision on on one, one two in a while. Yeah, Alabama is number two because our number one team has got better overall wins and a head-to-head blowout a couple weeks ago. That's Tennessee. I think I've had Tennessee in my one spot for a while. You, you gentlemen might have might have differed with me on that, but. We had Auburn. I mean, we're not gonna not gonna hide it. We had Auburn for a little while, and then they ran into the two game losing streak, and yeah. But that's what makes it fun. And Tennessee is going to get a little bit of a breather, comparatively speaking. Next four games: LSU and Food City. Road trips to AM and Arkansas, both winnable for different reasons. Vandy at home, Missouri away, Texas A and M at home. And then, and then we get to Auburn and Alabama. That, that'll be a fun week. And then South Carolina, the return trip. But anyway, uh, looking forward. To, t- Tennessee's got a chance to put a little distance between itself and, and some of the rest of the league up, up here in front of us, Max. Well, I don't know how we missed this, actually, Blake, because we went through all the remaining schedules and kind of said who we thought has the nicest setup. Mm-hmm. And – while while Tennessee has a has a tough march, the last four games there are pretty tough. That's kind of a good thing in a sense because you'll have opportunities late to really rack up a few big wins. But man, these next five games, they don't play they don't play a Ken Palm top forty team. You know, they, they could be you know, a double digit favorite in probably five of their next six games potentially. Yeah, so I mean, we could really see Tennessee start to to put a move on the league here. Um, I, I think that what we saw on Tuesday was the, I wouldn't say the blueprint for how to beat Tennessee, but we're kind of seeing a pattern with a style of play that Tennessee kind of gets mixed up with. So same thing with Mississippi state, same thing with South Carolina, when a team can match their physicality and, and slow the possessions down and kind of, just create a, a foul war and a rebounding war. Teams can start to to dig into Tennessee, but this when this team likes to get out and run, uh, we haven't really seen anyone been able to keep up with them. So big opportunity. Uh, the next what six games they could rattle off double digit wins in all of them. So big opportunity coming up. Yeah, I think there there will be some understandable pushback on Tennessee being one this week, uh, considering that. They did just lose by lose by four at home to South Carolina in their worst game of the season, but then they bounced back and had one of their best games of the season, or yeah. easily their best game of the season offensively at Kentucky, and they answered all the questions you had after the South Carolina game. Is anybody going to step up and help them? Well, they did. We saw yeah. everybody else step up and help Dalton connect, and so kind of evened out. And, yes, we know Kentucky struggled defensively, but, again, I, I can understand multiple number one you know, spots this week. If you want to argue Alabama – Yes, the Tennessee beat them, but, you know, again, you can kind of look at what Alabama's been doing. So, I don't know, but it does still feel like overall, when you look at Tennessee's full body of work to this point and everything that you kind of look at when you put into the power rankings, of course, the computers love them and all these other things. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's not – I don't know. You know, For a while, as we said, it was 1A, 1B, 1C. Now it's like, I don't know, man. There's, there's one, two, three, four. Like Kentucky fixes her defense. Chris is Florida Gators. Like, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot here. Like, there's a lot of teams to like at the top. Um, it's just some of them have got some things they got to fix to probably stay near the top. I think Kentucky certainly is the team you're circling there. Um, but South Carolina, ton of momentum. Alabama, ton of momentum. Auburn, all the momentum back after the two-game losing streak. Tennessee, feeling really good after that performance against Kentucky. So, yeah, it's going to set up for some fun games over the next couple of weeks as these teams – play each other which we know starts 
with the rematch with Alabama and Auburn on Wednesday. Real quick, I just want to note, real quick, uh, Chris, we have we have numbers in front of these as one, two, three, four, and everything, and it looks like they're separated by a lot. But but guys, I mean, if you look at, I hate just pulling straight from from Ken Palm and acting like it's the end all be all, but number five in the nation, Ken Palm, Auburn. Number six in the nation, Tennessee. Number seven in the nation, Alabama. These are three top ten Flip teams. Coin. Like we're not take your take whatever angle you want to take and rank them. That the point still stands. All three of these teams are like final four level right now. You know. So. Yeah. And what I what I can't decide between teams because we we could give you reasons that any of those three could be number one. We could even give you reasons South Carolina could be one. I think after that nobody's got a case for for number one votes at all. But I start looking at. And as you pointed out, the predictive computers are all just they're they're right there together. I start looking at who you beat and where you did it, and and that's where Tennessee separates a little bit. And, and Max, to your other point about schedule, let me put a number on some of this. Six games ahead for the Vols, eighty five percent chance are better to win five of those. The one under that is that road trip to A and M, sixty seven percent, even sixty seven percent chance on the road. Yeah, to be an A and M team that that that's tough in that building and can do some things that would cause Tennessee problems. So that's what's ahead. I'm not going to say. I'm tempted to say Tennessee that, that, that beats A and M, it wins the league. The problem is you look at that last four: Auburn at home, at Alabama, at South Carolina, Kentucky at home. Yeah. So even if even if Tennessee runs the table, I don't think it's clear unless everybody else takes a couple of losses. But it, it certainly. It certainly puts Tennessee in position to control its destiny at the end. Yeah. Parting thoughts, guys. Blake, I'll start with you. Hit the subscribe button. <laughs> That's all. I, you, I thought you were gonna I usually I mean, have more. Follow our work. <laughs> that's, that's my parting thoughts. So I just we just gave you forty five minutes on fourteen teams. My parting thoughts are: subscribe for more. If you want more minutes on even more analysis on SEC basketball, join our membership tier. It just means more. Follow us on Twitter at 14 Southeastern. There we go. There he is. Boom. There we go. Boom. Max, nothing from you. I just, I just, I wanted to pull that out of Blake. I got, I, I got what I needed. That was, that was great. Yeah. All right. Here, here's my parting thought. These teams are, the rankings change every week. These teams are pretty close. I would say Arkansas, Vanderbilt, Missouri at the bottom, own tier. Georgia, LSU, own tier, NIT tier, I would call it. Teams five through nine, Kentucky, Florida, A&M, Ole Miss, Mississippi State. Put them in a hat. I could make a different justification any given night. I think South Carolina, kind of a standalone four. And then again, pick your teams at the top, Tennessee, Alabama, Auburn. Um, the, the difference between South Carolina and those other four teams, if you go results, there's not much. If you look at predictive computers, there's a, a pretty substantial difference there. So that's that's how I see it. Doesn't have to be how you see it, but we appreciate you watching, whether you agree with us or not. We are going to predict all the games this week. We're going to do a fantasy draft. We're going to do recaps after Tuesday's games and Wednesday's games. We might do a live stream at some point. We got, I think, Bracketology coming this week if we got the time to do it and all our other stuff. Lots of stuff. We are your home for SEC basketball, not to mention baseball and football. So as Blake said, hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. For Blake Lovell and Max Barr, I'm Chris Lee. This is Southeastern 14 presented by Ben